welcome to another episode of my Coffee Break Art. Here you'll find snippets about art, something to watch in your coffee break. Wow, this has been a really difficult subject to look at. It's like a cave that looks nothing on the outside, but as you get deeper, um, it, it opens out as you explore it. It's about a work of art called The Bride Stripped Bare by Her Bachelors Even. A name as ambiguous as the work itself. Here we will call it by the usual name, The Large Glass. Sometimes there are things that are impossible to depict in art, but that doesn't stop people trying. Between 1915 and 1923, the artist Duchamp struggled to put into art form the different relationships between young girls and lads. He ended up creating two panes of glass, sandwiched with materials such as lead, foil, fuse wire, even dust. But it was never really finished and it will never make sense to the casual viewer. Luckily, Duchamp made copious notes to go with the artwork, and to be honest, without them it's impossible to understand what he was trying to say. It had a curious life. It was finished by 1923, but the glass was cracked in transit in 1936. But by chance the cracks seemed to follow the flow of energy in the artwork, so Duchamp decided to leave them, although he did have to make some repairs. It has been declared unfinished, it's been bought, sold, exhibited, broken again and eventually became too fragile to move. So in 1953 it was cemented into the floor of the Philadelphia Museum of Art where it remains to this day. Here is what I have decided is the best view of the work while it was being made in Duchamp's studio. I'm sorry the foreground is a bit cluttered, but I try to ignore this. At least five copies or replicas have been made. This one made in Stockholm University, but the most revered one was done in 1966 by Richard Hamilton for the Tate in London. Duchamp came across them from the US and signed it as his approval. This time, Toughened glass was used in order to prevent cracking, although in 1985 the lower pane did shatter into thousands of pieces, as shown here, and had to be rebuilt. Here they are trying to rebuild it. Study of the piece reveals nothing about its meaning. It's not aesthetic, and according to Duchamp, it was never finished. It is impossible to understand without the notes written by Duchamp. They give some clue as to what's going on, but even these are ambiguous. Clarity is not their strength. However, people have written copious essays exploring the work from every angle. Here I'm just going to offer some sort of overview. And to do this, it's far easier to show what's going on from some graphics. The large glass itself is designed to indicate the difference between the motivation of adolescent boys and girls. Duchamp called it the amorous pursuit. The large glass represents something called a fate machine, which is an imaginary mechanical contraption. We're not too sure what the objects in the glass actually represent. Could be flirting, wedding vows, sexual intercourse, or even all at once. The top section is the girl's domain, the lower half the lad's domain. Between them is a line called the horizon. The overall scene representing airborne femininity versus earthbound masculinity. The provocative feminine id above and the reactive masculine ego below. The boundary can be considered to be the bride's garments, the skin of her fleshy being, or even the boundary of her psyche. The bride herself is depicted as part visceral, 
part mechanical form. She has shed all of her physical form. Above her floats her halo, a sort of thought cloud area that represents her romantic aspirations, her dreams and her desires. In it are blank areas, which represent the voids in her dreams, waiting to be filled by a successful suitor. She will be looking for romance, caring love, financial security and potential fatherhood. The story begins with her broadcasting her availability, her desires. However, the lads will never understand what she's looking for. Duchamp envisages these overtures as some sort of vapour which he called a love gasoline. These vapours represent her erotic impulses. The lads themselves are shown as balloon-shaped pods and the vibes from the girls stimulate them, inflating them like balloons full of testosterone, lust forms like some sort of gas. This lust gas flows from the all into a complex fate machine representing fate or destiny and after some form of metamorphosis they take their chance through the scissors where everything gets split up. Remember this fluid is not necessarily liquid or gas. It could represent a flirtatious glance, even a marriage proposal. It's simply the lad's response to the girl's show of interest. Their spurts continue to hurtle up and some will cross the horizon to enter the bride's domain, which in effect brings them to her attention. Between the blades of the scissors, there is a lens in the glass, and if you peek through this, you obviously won't see anything of the artwork. Duchamp uses this to make the point that the large glass is an illustration of unseen abstract forces. But having crossed the horizon, the splashes then miss the voids in the girl's thought cloud. She's not receptive, she's not interested. The lads have made no impression on her and their desires remain unmet. Their motivation, based perhaps on short-term carnal desires, differs from what the girl is looking for. So that's the final message of the large glass a work that bravely attempts to illustrate a situation that we all do understand, but in the end, may not have actually worked. Before I finish, I must emphasise that what I've just told you is, is just the tip of the iceberg. There are hundreds of things in the glass, even bits of dust, all apparently moving and interlinked. Duchamp named and described them all in the notes that he placed in the green box. As I said before, like a small cave, the further you go in, the bigger it gets. Is it worth the effort? Well, that's for you to ponder. And thank you for watching this Coffee Break Art. I hope you enjoyed it. You can help me to get more views by clicking on the subscribe button, and I would appreciate this. Don't hesitate to add a comment below, and I'll see you next time.